All right, I'm doing a two inch front and one inch rear lift on a 2010 Honda Element. Uh, this is pretty much what it looks like once you jack it up. Uh, I've got some jack stands underneath it there. Um, went ahead and jacked it up off the ground to get the struts out to put in the one inch spacers. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is remove this piece right here. Uh, there's two little clips underneath. Just get you some little needle nose pliers and little plastic clips and they come right off. Uh, once you get that done, the next thing you're gonna do is attack this bolt right here. That bolt right there. Uh, take that off. That is a 17 millimeter. Um, pull that out. You might have to get a screwdriver on this other end and push it through. Um, comes off fairly easy. Uh, on the other hand, that 17 bolt down here on the bottom of the strut is a bit of a pain. Uh, I find that if you get a pry bar and put it up underneath it and pry it out, that helps a lot. Um, that'll help slide it out. Um, also, another thing, I didn't talk about this clip. This is just a clip. You grab this clip here and you pull it out and it will take out this uh, brake line. Uh, don't forget to bolt back up your uh, parking brake. I'm going to have to do that once I get the uh, weight of the car back up on the uh, axle here because once all that's out, you're going to go to the top and you'll notice two bolts there. One, two. Take both those bolts out. Uh, do not touch the center bolt right there. Do not touch that. Um, this is the passenger side. It is already taken apart, already pulled out. Uh, this control arm has to go also. Uh, it comes with a uh, adjustable uh, camber control arm, I guess is what they would call it. It has a little adjustment in the middle you can turn to bring it in or bring it out. Uh, so that way you can fix any alignment issues. Uh, whether you're doing the lift or not, uh, that, that is an option. Apparently these elements have um, camber issues in the back after a while. Other than that, uh, I did come up with one problem. Bought a lift on eBay that states one inch. It's a little one inch spacer that goes here. Two inch spacer in the front. Came across the first problem. This one inch spacer, when you put it on, as you notice, if this was flat, that bolt hits the next bolt. Therefore, that causes a problem. Uh, I'm going to work on grinding this section of the bolt off, just a little bit off the top to try to get it to slide in, or I'm going to put a uh, washer there to space it off that way it will fit and just grind off the tip here. Now, either way, I'll let you guys know. All right, so it looks like grinding that off uh, with the grinder, make sure you wear safety glasses. It looks like you can put that right in there and just have enough room. Of course, you're gonna have to put it through, thread it like as you're putting it on. And like I said, this actually goes on. I know I'm putting it on sideways here, but it goes just like that. Uh, and the two bolts go in. But as you can see, the one bolt is going to hit the other bolt on the spacer itself. Uh, if you do that, you shouldn't have any issues uh, grinding down. But make sure you put this nut on, you run it up on this bolt before you grind it. So that way when you back it out, you can redo these threads. Alright, as you can see, you're going to have to kind of slide this in and run it up because if not there's no other way to do it so you're just going to run it all the way up you have to get a wrench in there an open-ended wrench and tighten it up once it's all done but as you can see grinding the tip of that bolt off that comes out the top 
Uh, we'll definitely make this spacer fit. So far, so good. I will tell you this much. This is not a bolt-on kit. Uh, with that being said, that problem right there, I mean, unless you have a grinder at home, uh, you're not going to be able to install this. See how close that is. Uh, that one looks like it is almost touching. I might have to take that back off and regrind it down just a little bit, but I'm going to risk it. Uh, that is it, guys. We'll see how that goes. All right, guys, pain in the butt part. Thing that we didn't realize we were going to have to do uh, in order to get this spacer in there. See that spacer I just showed you earlier? You have got to, of course, you already disconnected this from the, the uh, control arm up top. You have to disconnect the parking brake wire. You got to disconnect the brake line and slide it through a little bit. Uh, also, you got to have to disconnect it from this bracket from right here. Um, what I did was I got a two by four, just caught that lip down there, pushed down on it right here. Try not to bend the, uh, the plate here, the dust plate, uh, and had somebody actually step on this, push it down far enough to get the bottom of this strut in. It was a pain, but if you have somebody stand on this and put all their weight until this thing almost touches the ground, you should be able to slide that bolt in. All right, next thing is you're gonna have to get socket drive up in here. This bolt does not turn. This is welded onto the, con the uh, control arm bracket. This bolt does come off. Like I said, you're gonna have to Get a smaller socket drive in here because the larger socket drive will not fit uh, and then uh, break that loose. All right, got the new control arm on, uh, the adjustable control arm. <laughs> Getting it to here after that spacer's put in is a real pain. I managed to get a jack underneath the uh, rotor and jacked it up and it ran it right up close to where my bolt needs to go in. I'm gonna put the bolt in and then uh, uh, bolt, bolt up all the rest of the stuff and then we should be good to go. All right, when you uh, install this bolt, you wanna put a little bit of uh, thread locker on there. Um, that way hopefully this nut will, won't come back off. Uh, the original control arm had the nut welded on uh, this one has like a lock washer on the nut itself built in, but I went ahead and put some um, thread locker on there just to make sure it doesn't back off. Also, you run this up, they're left-handed and right-handed, so they run, when you spin this, these control arms go in and go out. Best way to do this is, is get you some um, anti-seize, rub it all over these threads, all the way down the threads that go inside, and... Um, run this one just a couple turns, run this one a couple turns, and then uh, hold the center, hold, well actually I'm sorry, hold this and this, and turn the center, and it will start bringing it in, bringing both of them in at the same time, you wanna bring them in evenly. Um, set it next to your control arm that you have uh, stock, uh, and pretty much get it right about the same size as the stock control arm. You are gonna have to go to an alignment shop and get uh, this aligned properly uh, for your camber, uh, which is your actual lean out of the top of the tire, uh, lean in on the top of the tire. Um, they'll adjust that for you. This is fully adjustable. Make sure you let them know that you have this because they will tell you that they cannot do it. Um, but once you have this, they can. Because it's just a little bit of a pain. You could probably do it, but I'm just going to wait until later. Uh, I did get this bracket installed on the bottom that they give you. It has two little bolts and two holes. Well, it's four holes. You put the two bolts in the two of the holes, bring the bracket over the side to the front of the vehicle here, and clip this back through. This was the original clip that was clipped into the old, con the old control arm. Um, tighten up your bolts here, and I'm just about ready on this one side and then I'll work on the uh, left side. 
All right, guys, fun added bonus on the driver's side. There is this box. I'm not sure exactly what it's for. Uh, honeycomb looking thing has a bracket here. And well, a nut there and a nut there. Let's say a nut, a bolt there and a bolt there. It looks like there's another bolt further down on the other side. There's another bracket there with another bolt way up there. You can see it up there. Um, I actually just uh, undid these two bolts, pushed it down a little bit and kind of out of the way. And I managed to get the strut out without having to remove it. Uh, let's see if it's going to be that easy putting the strut with the spacer back in. Uh, I will let you know though, uh, just heads up though, you're going to have to unbolt that to get this side out. Alright guys, I uh, got it off the ground, got the tire on there. I did not measure. I wish I would have from the center of the axle to exactly how high it lifted it. Uh, it is said that the lift kit says it will lift it one and a half inches in the back and two and a half in the front to compensate for the one inch difference from stock. Uh, they always pitch cars down a little lower in the front uh, to help with uh, front end collisions. Um, might be something else also, but I do know that is one reason why they lower the front of cars and keep the backs up. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, looks a little better than it did stock. Uh, definitely get a little more clearance. Uh, this is my father's vehicle. Uh, he mainly wanted it. Uh, we had to fix the camber anyway, so along with the camber kit in the back, we went ahead and lifted the whole truck uh, to compensate for uh, possible flooding streets, things like that. Uh, it won't give him much more clearance, but it will definitely help.